All right, and we are back. And so we are going to start to talk today about air and uncertainty. And again, for every measurement, we need to quantify air or essentially the total uncertainty of a measurement. Um, and there are different types of air that you can encounter in lab. And some air is expected and we have to quantify. Um, and the different types of air are going to require different types of analysis. Uh, and there are some types of air that we are not going to discuss in a lab report. In fact, if that type of air occurs during your experiment, um, you must reproduce uh, and redo the experiment. Uh, but we'll get to that in due time. So um, air, again is simply going to be in the most straightforward kind of terms is just your measured value minus the true value. Now the problem here is what is the true value? So we're gonna have to develop an estimate uh, and a confidence interval essentially for those values. So we have co most commonly four types of air, precision air, bias air, illegitimate air, and airs that can be sometimes bias or sometimes precision airs. So let's go ahead and we're gonna spend a lot of the class dealing with precision or random air. I don't like the term random, but you'll often encounter that. Um, I like the term stochastic. Um, so precision airs are airs that are going to, are gonna be different for each successive measurement. Um, so if anyone has seen a histogram, histogram shows essentially the probability of finding a measurement. So the air there is going to be slightly different each time, but you can estimate the, that air and the precision um, of precision air based on the, the width of this Gaussian. So the, this width is typically associated with the standard deviation. We'll get into Gaussians and all of those, what those values mean in, in a bit. But um, if they kind of happen randomly, so for example, with a micrometer, you know, you have, especially with a digital micrometer, often you'll have that last um, digital number kind of fluctuating. Oh, or a the thermocouple as well. You'll have those values fluctuate. So those would be examples of effectively a precision air. Now, um, and the width of those tells you again, again, we obviously want that Gaussian to be, if this is the true value here, we want it to be as small as possible. Um, so those are fluctuating. Again, you, you, we're going to analyze precision air and precision air happens a lot. It's one of the most common types of air that is gonna occur. Um, now the difficult part is it's hard to it's hard to eliminate that type of air when you're designing an experiment. Um, but when we encounter precision air, we're going to use a lot of statistical tools to analyze that air. There's also bias or systematic airs. I like systematic uh, <laughs> in terms of the language there. Um, bias airs are going to occur the same way each time a measurement's made. So if you have a balance and you know, like my scale. I know it's for sure consistently off by a kilogram because I don't definitely don't weigh that much. I'm, I'm just joking. It's just, it's a joke. Um, but they're not going to show a distribution. They're going to occur the same way every single time. So you're going to see effectively like a delta function. Um, if this is the true value, it's just going to be off by a certain, certain value and it's going to be off the same each time. So that could be a calibration error. Um, it could be, again, if you're trying to measure like temperature over time and you're having someone like a, hopefully you're not having someone with a stopwatch or if they're measuring voltage and they kind of jump the gun on a measurement, that's going to occur effectively the same way each time. Defective equipment, again, loading errors. Um, then and there's system resolution limits too. So again, like if you're using a ruler, you may be off by a centimeter each time because of the tick marks. So those are, that's, those are the types of error that can occur. Bias error, we're going to see we can't really analyze that with statistical measurements. Um, we're going to instead have to do air propagation, and that's going to be um, something that's probably not, even if you've taken a statistics course before, something you haven't encountered. Um, there's also illegitimate error. Illegitimate error is basically lab mistakes, blunders, um, you spilled a beaker, analysis errors, computational calculation errors. We, you cannot state and if you're turning in a journal article or a lab report, you cannot say, well, there was illegitimate error and that's what caused our measurements to be off. Um, that is not justifiable. You have to reperform the experiment if that is the case, if that happened. So you can't just leave it as it is and say, well, that the data is the data. No, no, no that, that doesn't, I mean, if it's illegitimate error, we have to reperform uh, it. Um, bias errors are also often the larger sources of error. Um, and bias errors can be minimized um, by redesigning an experiment. Um, so that that is something that you can probably fix potentially. 
um, precision error is much harder to deal with. And then finally, errors that are sometimes biased, sometimes precision. Um, so those are difficult to analyze because you're not sure how to quantify it, um, but, but you can do so and you'll have to do a combination of statistical analysis and then the error propagation. So, um, excellent. So those are the different types of air. Next time we're gonna get into samples, um, basically total uncertainties, and then how do we design our apparatus um, to minimize air and how do we plot things um, to communicate our experiments. So we'll see you next video. Thanks, bye.